All right, everybody, give you a round of applause for Salvador Mendoza about Samsung Pay tokenized numbers, flaws, and issues. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be in DEF CON this year. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Samsung Pay tokenized numbers, flaws, and issues. Also, we're going to talk about Coco Dry, Old Sun, laser beams today. Basically, I have 20 minutes to explain almost one year of my research. And we are going to start with the agenda for today. We're going to talk about terminology, analyzing tokenized numbers, MST and NFC protocols, token phases and status, of course, flaws and issues. The usual scenarios, yeah, I'm going to introduce two tools for today. Um, at the end, I'm going to talk about international tokens. For terminology, I'm going to use NFC for neural field communication, MST for magnetic security transmission protocol, BTS for Vista token service, which mainly are the protocol for the tokenization process. Tokenized numbers, but it's a process where the primary account, phone number, is replaced with surrogate value. In this case, it's going to be a token. And the token is a venture to interchange for goods or services. DSP for token service provider, who is in charge for the tokenization process. And PAM for primary account number. So let's start analyzing tokenized numbers. Basically, when you're going to make a payment, Samsung Pay is going to create three tracks. It's like when you swipe your card, but this time, all the tracks are the same values. Why? Basically, because it doesn't matter which track the terminal is going to detect. If it detects anyone, the transaction can go through. If we analyze the last 20 digits of the token, we need to analyze like they are different counters. Basically, the first four digits are for its new expiration date for the new virtual credit card. The last three digits are for new service code. The service code is very important because, for example, you have a pin and chip protection card and you add it to Samsung Pay. Samsung Pay is going to replace this value so you don't have the necessity to have a physical card with you to make a payment. The last counter is a transaction range, which plays at the CVV role. Uh, the next counter is a transaction ID, which mainly increases plus one every time you use Samsung Pay. And the last three digits are random numbers to fill the American Banking Association format, or track through in this case. Offline and online mode. Basically, when you are on offline mode, the counter in the middle of the token doesn't change. But when Samsung Pay connects to the internet, this counter increases every like three or four transactions. One of the problems with Samsung Pay is that you can make payments in airplane mode. This means that Samsung Pay doesn't have a full control of the tokens. Let's talk a little bit about the token phases or status. Like any other transactions, Samsung Pay has different, uh, the tokens of Samsung Pay has different status, like for active, pending, dispose, and roll, expire after a period of time, and suspended. This is how, uh, according to Visa Developer Center, how a tokenization process or provider updates the tokens. It needs a B provision token ID and also the IP key in a Johnson format. Please keep in mind this slide that we're going to use uh, in the, the next uh, example. So the file structure is very important. We, I found more than 20 databases in the calls of Samsung Pay. Some of them are for connections, for certificates, encryption, directories and files. I'm going to take a look at the structure of the, of the, on the bottom of the database, CBP, JAN, Encrypt database, to see the structure of this database. If we see the structure of this database, we can find some of the, of the fields that we need to update a token. This means if an attacker could find a way to the, to the crypt or to get these provision token IDs, he would be able to update a token all the time, even, for example, it's expired or disposal. Maybe you are thinking, 
this um, database are very encrypted. But what I found was that encryption for databases using static passwords. Basically, we, if we see this method, the encrypt method, but it's not just the database manager. Also, another method called this function to encrypt the data. Continue with flaws and issues. When I was able to make, a, to make a backup of the Samsung Play databases, in the card table, I found the token expiration date was in blank, specifically in that field. Also, that view retries part time, implement, implements timestamp format, which uh, expire over 24 hours. So basically, the main problem here is if Samsung Pay generates a token, but you don't use this token to make a purchase, that token is still alive or active. For example, if I ask you, can you show me how Samsung Pay works? And you show me, but you're not making a transaction, actually, but that token is still alive. When you close this application and open again, you are going to get a new token, but the last token is still alive. Continue with flaws and issues. Basically, you are suspicious that somewhere, somebody captured your token and delete your virtual credit card, and you add it again. The last digits of the new virtual credit card, they are going to change just in the last four digits, basically. I make a lock, adding and deleting the card. So let's go to the interesting part. Dangerous scenarios. We're going to talk about reversing the encrypt and decrypt function, social engineering, jamming MST signals, and guessing the next token. When attacker is able to decrypt, to reverse these functions, he will be able to get, I think, main, main almost, all, almost, almost the, the, the information for all the encryption function because they use for many methods. Let's talk about social method. Basically, I made, made a, a tool using Raspberry Zero, Lipo, Power Boost, a credit card reader, basically around $50. I'm going to show you an example how it works. So, like the example that I told you, you have this, this tool on where my hand. I can capture the tokens when I ask you how Samsung Pay works. And this tool sends these tokens by email. So I can use that token using another tool, like Mac, Mac Spoof tool from Sami Kamkar. Thank you, Sami. So basically, when I got the token, I compile, and I go to the uh, grocery machine, and I try to use that token. So I select the product, and it's authorizing, and it's vending. <laughs> Thank you. Now let's talk about Jampay. Jampay is a jammer. It runs three services. One is for jammer, to jam the terminal. Another is for the email service, and the another is for you can see the tokens in the web browser. Basically, it's running a Python web server. It's an example. Let's imagine that you're in Vegas, right? So we're in Vegas. So basically, I found a machine, and I use my Yammer. So the main point here, the Yammer is still sending magnetic uh, MST signals, magnetic secure transmission signals. When a user comes to make a transaction, the terminal is not anymore in input mode. So the jammer is going to detect the MST signal, and they're going to send it to me by email. I got the token. So after that, I use a max proof. Again, Sammy, you're my hero. Um, I make a transaction. transaction. After that, I'm going to select the drink. And I'm vending. So basically, that's the sample I have.
I was thinking about to, to get like talking, but basically I forgot my crowd, crowd reader. Sorry about that. So let's talk about international Samsung Pay tokens. I assume that the virtual credit card was going, was going to use the same restrictions like a physical card. Like for example, when you, when you are going to another country, you basically call your bank and tell me I'm going to be in, let's say, Mexico. So the bank take care of it and you can use that card in that country. What I found interesting was I sent one of my tokens to Mexico to see some of my friends can make a purchase and how kind of restrictions the bank is going to have. So basically it was July 8th. I sent one of my tokens to one of guy in Mexico. And he's trying to charge me 20 Mexican pesos, basically. So the transaction went through. He asked for his signature. That's not my signature, but who cares? So the transaction went through, and I got the confirmation from Samsung Pay. You had spent 20 Mexican pesos even when Samsung Pay is not in Mexico yet. So the takeaways for today, Samsung Pay has some levels of security, but it's a fact that could be targeted for malicious attacks. Samsung Pay, Samsung Pay has some limitations in the tokenization process, which could affect customer security. And finally, token generated by Samsung Pay could be used in another hardware. Please, if you have any questions, this is your time to ask me. I need to say thank you to all these guys. Really appreciate your help.